Good morning everyone. Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. This is Hashma Dikandi from the House of Charity and today I will be talking about burn safety from electric burns and electric fires and how to prevent it. So what precautions you should take to prevent electric burns and electric fires. So first of all, I would like to welcome all of you on our fire safety and burn prevention series. As I just mentioned that today our topic is safety from electric burn. And it is very important to teach how to prevent burns because everybody has small children in the home. If your children are grown up, then you will have grandchildren. That's why I'm here with Mr. Safety. Would you like to say good morning, Mr. Safety? Good morning, everyone. How are you? I'm excited. Me too. I am very excited and I'm looking forward sharing your views and my views with our audience. And by the way, in the end, I have a surprise for all of you, especially to all the kids who are watching. I know Zuzu is watching from Pakistan, so it's a big surprise for Zuzu. So I would like to start my presentation. So, uh, my talk about electric burn and preventing electric fires and electric burn injuries. Everybody has electricity in their homes and appliances that they use with the electricity. There are many appliances. First appliance that comes in everybody's mind is iron and also curling hair curlers, and also hair straightener. So these are few things that are hot sometimes and are not hot sometimes. So it is important for us to teach our children that these things are hot sometimes and they are not hot sometimes, so they need to stay away. Whether it is plugged in and hot or whether it is not hot. So it is very, very important for us to teach our children. And there is one more thing that we usually do. And I honestly, I'm not kidding. I'm going to tell you that I do this a lot myself, used to. Okay, so you need to focus on this word, used to. When I was a teenager, I used to do this a lot. And that is this. So what I used to do is without unplugging the iron, I used to fill water for the steam. So you have to make sure that your iron is unplugged, number one. Number two, after pouring the water in the electric, in the water socket in electric iron, you need to make sure that it is dry, so dry it with a piece of towel and then plug it. Before plugging it, you need to make sure one more thing, that your hands are dry. Don't use your wet hands to plug the iron or any device because you can get burn or electric shock. For the children, you know, they are very fascinated by these plugs. They don't know what these are for, but they think that these can very fascinating say. So always make sure that kids are not playing with these plugs. Another thing that one of my co-worker, my team member did, and that is this. Make sure when you are changing the bulb, of a lamp or of an electric socket, anywhere, you need to make sure that the power is off. 
it is always, it's very tricky because you don't know if the power, or especially if you have lots of switches, you're not sure which one is for this electric um, socket. So you need to make sure that power is off and take it very seriously. One time I know someone who was uh, putting a new bulb in the socket and the bulb broke and the socket was on and that person got a little bit of electric shock. Luckily, he was saved, but it did not damage anything, but you need to make sure that uh, the switch is turned off. So I hope these uh, prevention tips that we are giving you today, me and my friend, Mr. Safety, are benefiting you all. And I'm sure um, if you have any questions, please inbox us. The other thing that I really would like to talk about is especially when somebody is taking a shower and the light turns off and, and you decided to turn the light off, on, do not do this. Do not turn the light on with your wet soapy hand. Because by mistake, you are not there and you are just trying to turn the a switch on. You can easily put your finger in this electric socket and it can give you an electric shock. So that is a very uh, good step of preventing it because this happens very commonly in a home. You know, you're taking a bath or you're taking a shower and especially in developing countries when you have load shedding and suddenly you realize the electricity is off or turned on and you just went like this behind the wall and try to turn the switch on or off and your hands are wet, they are soapy so, and, and you are in water. So be very, very careful. Especially, you know, these poles outside. You need to prevent these poles. Touching the poles, especially if anything is stuck on these wires, make sure you don't grab an iron rod to take that thing off, number one. Number two, in case of storms or in case of heavy rain, make sure that you are not under these a power lines you need to go inside in a in a safe covered place or if your children are playing outside and the rain started and you decided to just run and uh, grab my ball and you 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 are inside doing something and your child runs out under the pole to grab the ball and at the same time uh, you know the lightning stuck it is very very dangerous we have seen accidents happening and this is why it's called accidents because we are not prepared what time this will happen so make sure that you prevent this from happening there are one thing that I really would like to show, especially a small children, um, when, they, when they are crawling. I have grandchildren also, and Mr. Safety loves my grandchildren. Do you know Mr. Safety? They are coming today. I love Ashman and all the children in the world, and I want them to be safe. That's why I joined Ashma in her burn prevention and fire safety series. Thank you, Mr. Safety. So I was talking about electric burn with little children, especially the children who crawls or who are in the walkers. So what they do is that they conveniently, if, if you put them in a walker like this, 
and you decide to um, leave them alone so they can do little exploring, this is the first thing they will do. They will go to the electric plug place and they would like to pull this wire. Sometimes they start chewing the wire. Sometimes they grab the key and put the key inside the socket. So make sure that you have covered all your plugs and all your uh, electric units. It's very easy. If you don't have the, the thing that can go inside the electric plug, um, uh, what you do is that you can just take a cardboard box and cut it according to that um, size and then tape it with the duct tape so your child cannot pull it. Or what I used to do when my kids were young, I used to put furniture in front of that, like a chair, like a table, like a small table, like a stool, just to block that place where kids are playing or I think kids can go there, especially toddlers. So I hope you will do this starting right now. When I'm saying right now, I mean right now. Believe me, there are lots of home fire that started by electric fire. And there are, there are lots of electric and burn injuries. So um, in children that we have seen first handed. Another, another reason of big home fire or small home fire that starts is when we plug everything in one socket. So you need to make sure that you don't plug all your appliances in one socket. So usually what this person did is they plugged a toaster and electric uh, kettle in one socket, electric socket which is good, but in the other picture, you will see four appliances plugged in one electric socket. So you need to make sure that they are not plugged together. You have to make sure that they are in different plugs. So while sometimes you use them together, so they will be consuming the electricity at the same time and it will start or ignite the fire or it will do something. So you have to make sure that you do divide all your appliances in your kitchen and in your bathroom accordingly. The other thing that usually people do, and I have seen people doing it too, is when we use toasters, what we do is that we put a toast in there and if the toast is stuck, we always take a knife or a fork or something to bring it out. You need to make sure it is unplugged before you do that because it can cause electric shock. You are using a metal, putting it in the in the uh, toaster uh, uh, toaster, and it is already running and it is uh, red. This means it's hot. So you need to make sure that it is unplugged and you just start taking these precautionary steps and these little steps will make into a your habit. So they say that if you do something for 21 days, it will become your habit. So in short, I put everything that uh, in one picture that you should avoid doing and never put metal in the toaster oven you will see this here. 
don't plug too many appliances in one plug you will see that it is very very important do not use hair dryer or hair straightener usually we use them in the bathroom but make sure while using it you don't put it in the sink or don't put it on the spot where there is water you really need to make sure you do that because and another thing i already told you that you need to teach your children there are few things that are hot sometimes and they are not hot sometimes when they are unplugged they are not hot so if they are plugged in and the, your toddler or your kid will think it is not uh, plugged in though it is hot and they will touch it they it's called electric contact burn and it will really give somebody a bad burn injury so you need to make sure that you do this teach your children also stay away from electric uh, big wires outside poles and wires do not stay there when it's stormy or rainy do not use electric rods to bring something down usually i've seen that people grow vegetables and their vegetable wine goes up on the electric wire and they want to take the vegetable out and pull it out so they use their electric puller or they use their metal puller do not use do that always make sure you are wearing a rubber slippers always make sure you use a wooden rod a wood long wood to do that and make sure when you are doing it you are not standing on the water also make sure that it is not rainy or stormy or it is wet on the you know wire make sure it is very very dangerous and another thing you will see this kind of boxes so make sure you stay away from these boxes which is very very important and make sure not just you make sure your toddlers or if you are having a play day with your children and their friends are there and they are playing outside just make sure the environment the play area where they are playing it is safe for them if either they are playing outside or they are playing inside you need to make sure that their play area is safe the all the electric plugs our sockets are properly secure make sure there is no wires running make sure there is no extension cords that are exposed make sure the vacuum cleaner plug is not on children loves vacuum cleaner my own grandson loves vacuum cleaner and he likes to plug it in and take it off so make sure it is as an adult and as a community member it is our responsibility to make sure that our community is safe for our children and for our elders you know some elders i've seen they get burned by electric heater so we need to make sure that they are not wearing flammable outfit that can catch fire the heater is not too close to them so this is i think very very important and if we teach this to our children in this young age this will become their habit and then guess what they will grow into a responsible sensible cautionary adult and they will make sure so you leave this legacy behind in which you raise your children in a very safe environment and just make sure that their behavior is not risky their behavior is safe and you will prevent fire safety and burn injuries so i hope you liked about this and mr safety would like to say goodbye goodbye everyone and if you have any questions 
about anything, please let us know and uh, inbox us and we will be very gladly giving you our answers. Another thing that I was telling you all that I have a surprise for all of you. So here is my surprise. I will show you my new kittens. My brother gave me last night these kittens and I will be taking care of them. And guess what? They are twins. I have one more. Look at these. Don't you think they are so cute? So, I haven't named them. And so if you want to help me name them, it will be my pleasure. So this brown one is a boy and this white one is a kitty cat, a girl. So please help me name my kitty, kittens. And they are new family members we have. They are indoor kittens. So I hope you have enjoyed the uh, burn prevention series and also my kitty cat. Thank you very much and goodbye and please inbox us if you have any questions.